Imagine a game world that doesn't fake anything. Every building is real, every room is enterable, and the load times are seamless. Such an idea likely comes off as naive, ignorant to the technological limitations of our time. But is it? Instead of shutting the idea down, we should look to see if obstacles in the way can be overcome. With technology like Nanite, the cloud, and the cheapening of hard drive costs, we may be nearing the next evolution of gaming, where we don't focus on pretty graphics so much as the features our games offer. It's human nature to explore. Open world video games typically try to sell the illusion that their worlds are vast, real, and living. This is attractive to our human brain. It gives it something to focus on, immerse itself in, and investigate. Immersion is amplified when the player feels that they're a small part of the overall system. One of the biggest things that break this illusion is a fake building. These offenders can be tall, short, skinny, or fat, but they're all hollow on the inside. Game developers create the illusion of a real city by modeling blocks and shapes with various textures to imitate real buildings. If you move your camera through these buildings, however, you'll typically find that they're completely empty, opening only to a skybox and not opening to the player. Of course, these decisions are realistic, based on the limitations of our time. Developers have to consider who will be playing these games on what devices, if they will have the necessary developers to create these interiors, if they have enough time, if it's worth the cost, if the consumer has enough hard drive space to hold this kind of data, and ultimately, if doing something like this is even worthwhile for the player or the game. So where is this worthwhile? This video is sponsored by Age of Origins, a fun tower defense strategy game with a unique twist, zombies. In Age of Origins, you fend off hordes of zombies in order to save humanity. Grow your city to stand out in this post-Doomsday world by building it to be more powerful than the rest. Not only do you build upon and upgrade the city, but you're challenged in mini-games where you'll build defense lines to fend off hordes of zombies. Your defense options are diverse, but so are your enemies. You can recruit unique characters to help you out, and you can even cultivate zombies to fight alongside you. There are also giant titans that you can control to help you out along the way like Genshin and Empress. If you don't want to play alone, you can build diplomatic ties with hundreds of commanders from other cities and fight alongside them or against them. You can also zoom out to see your progress on the world map. This game is the cat's pajamas, so download it now using the link in the description to redeem $60 worth of free rewards. Games with RPG elements, war games, and ambitious open world games benefit the most from having enterable buildings. Link can explore the entire world and all the towns in Breath of the Wild. Most of the buildings in Breath of the Wild are enterable, and this works to enhance the gameplay, story, and immersion. Link can purchase new armor, visit different shops, stay at an inn, get his horse, and more inside these locations. They serve the game well. Warzone's gameplay isn't limited to hiding behind the corners of buildings and sticking to the streets. Instead, every window could have an enemy behind it. Enemies could be lurking behind any door, and shootouts are much more grounded because you can run in and out of buildings for cover. Grand Theft Auto is known for having some of the greatest maps to explore with huge levels of detail. The few buildings you can enter in GTA 4 and online have become hot spots for players to explore. Game worlds like Los Santos can get boring fast, but by utilizing the vertical space, players have much more to see and do. They have something to explore. Halo 1 through 3 were awesome because they felt open and massive. Players could find ways out of the map and even get more replayability out of the games because of it. Glitching out of Halo 2's mission, Delta Halo, was fun because you could walk around the entire landmass. Later Halo games implemented return to battlefield death screens, eliminating any and all player creativity and expression. Invisible walls do the same. Exploration is vital for an open world video game. Red Dead 2 would benefit immensely from having more interable buildings. In a game where you're walking most of the time, you need locations to inhabit. GTA both benefits and suffers from its vehicles. In many cases, players don't have a reason to get out of their cars, opting even to shoot from the safety of their bulletproof vehicles in many missions. The game is focused almost entirely on vehicles. As a result of this, movement is fast. 
people do not slow down or spend time in localized zones. They run around the map at Mach 5. To combat this, developers should incentivize players to get out of their vehicles and explore interiors. Maybe there's loot, objectives, stores, lore, or social hangouts. For example, a mission could take place on the 13th floor of an apartment complex. Players would have to drive to the lobby or fly to the roof enter the building, and fight their way to the mission objective. What was once an underutilized aspect of the game, on-foot gunplay, now coexists in the same city in the same world with driving gameplay. Players could control buildings in turf-type wars, shooting at trespassers from buildings. They could take the battle away from the streets, removing the Mark II from the equation, letting players fight with real guns, or even just to escape from the Mark II hovering above. GTA V was upgraded when it made its release on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. They added first-person mode, but in order to do this, every interior of every vehicle had to be updated. If a player was in first-person mode, 40% of their screen would have been a low-detailed steering wheel and dashboard. They took the time and made the effort to add interiors to their vehicles, which required work and cost money. While interiors of cars and interiors of buildings are two vastly different ideas, the point remains. Adding more features will require more work. The cost of adding all these car interiors paid off though in that we have first person mode now and can customize the car interiors. With Rockstar's work, we now have more features. In the same way, building interiors will take much more time and effort, but it will pay off for the consumer. Hello Games has also made the effort to put features first, upgrading the entire social hub interior at the Space Anomaly in the Beyond update for No Man's Sky. They also upgraded base building, proving again that interiors have their place in even the biggest of game worlds. Imagine a game where you play a SWAT team that has to infiltrate a fully modeled skyscraper. This building has elevator shafts, ventilation systems, offices, utility rooms, bathrooms, and every aspect of a working building. The objective is to stealthily save the hostages, kill the terrorist players, and disarm the bomb in a period of time. Now imagine the same objective in a city with a few streets and non-interrable buildings. You're now limited to the streets. The element of verticality and ingenuity has almost entirely been removed. The point is that there's a lot more character to buildings than a city street. You're upgrading from one plane of directional traversal to three dimensions of direction. Add to it the inner workings of a complicated structure like a building, then you have more to work with, like shutting off the power, triggering the water sprinklers, climbing the elevator shafts, or sneaking through air vents. Would you rather walk straight down the street, enemies ahead, or climb and infiltrate the building, enemies lurking behind, above, and below? Not only is there more character to interiors than streets, but there's more to explore and actively search. You can almost immediately see everything a street has to offer. But in a building, you have to make the effort to look, to walk, to explore. Interiors promote exploration, and people love exploring. Games like No Man's Sky that are built on exploration and don't fake anything are successful because people love exploring without limits. What you have in pretty much every game that has a city is wasted potential, underutilized verticality. Look at all the unused space in a map like Watch Dogs. The volume of space has been lost to fake buildings. It's almost like a cheat to make the map appear bigger when it's actually getting smaller. Many players want map expansions for games like GTA V. Why? Because they want to explore and adventure through new locations. Simply put, it's fun to inhabit new areas and explore new places. Removing all speculation and arguments about whether or not it's possible or worth it and putting them to the side, fully enterable buildings objectively offer more content to the player. Since when is more content a bad idea? Yeah! Oh man! Games like Hitman are built, by design, perfectly. Overdoing the interiors or adding too many unnecessary interiors could potentially clutter the area, confuse the player, and ultimately detract from the experience. IOI's Hitman makes great use of their space, offering most if not all of the structures to the player. More interiors would be great if IOI felt they had a purpose. Hitman uses the environment, locations, types of people, objects, and more as tools for the player to commandeer. So adding blank or unnecessary rooms in a game like that could muddy the objective if done incorrectly. Do linear games benefit from having more explorable space? Some linear games like Last of Us, Uncharted, or Dark Pictures Anthology games 
games wouldn't benefit as much from fully enterable interiors. These games have a story to tell. Immersion in these stories is accomplished by telling that story in the most fluent way. Slowing the player's ability to progress through these stories can break the immersion. Even textures or reflective shaders can be lame in a game based in a city. You don't feel like there's anything inside these buildings because there isn't, and you can see that. Spider-Man used an ingenious shader trick to make buildings appear to have depth. Rather than sticking a picture on the wall, they designed a parallaxing shader that calculated where your camera was oriented in relation to the shader and faked an interior. Grove Street Games also tried implementing this technique in their remasters of the classic GTA games, although they didn't do as good of a job. In the past, our technology didn't allow for interiors to be seamlessly entered, but even in spite of the limitations of the time, they still created interiors. These interiors were accessed through a load screen that would move your character into a new level or isolated location that had the interior. Even in GTA Online, most interiors are faked side pocket realities or stored under the map of Los Santos. The Maze Bank interior and the Mobile Operations Center are much like the TARDIS from Doctor Who, bigger on the inside. CD Projekt Red made Cyberpunk sound like it would have several explorable buildings, boasting that floors stack when describing the space they were supposedly going to offer. Did they back out of this vision because it wasn't possible with today's technology? Nanite is the next step in technology for video games. Video games are run by game engines. Unreal Engine is a game engine developed by Epic Games. The fifth iteration of Unreal Engine has several groundbreaking innovations, but none so extreme as Nanite. Video games populate the screen with polygons, 3D modeled meshes that look like objects or scenery. This building is a polygon mesh. This cup is a polygon mesh. Artists that model these assets have to pay attention to optimization, using the least amount of triangle polys while still maintaining a satisfying look to the model. Low quality versions of models are at different levels of detail. These are called LODs for short. LODs are created to let developers show the object from far away, without having to load in the poly heavy detailed asset that the player wouldn't even be able to make out from that distance anyways. Nanite does this, but in a much more complicated way. Nanite allows you to have any asset, including movie quality assets, on screen. It does this in a nearly limitless capacity. What this means for developers is this, 3D model one highly detailed version of your object, import it, and let Unreal Engine handle the optimization. What this means for consumers is, you can look as close as you want at an object, and if they modeled it so, you won't be able to see the polygons that make it up. It will look like a real rock, stone, or building. You can also have as many of these objects on screen at once without an impact on performance. Nanite shifts and swaps the polys to only use the amount of detail you can perceive from your active viewpoint. The further you get, the less detail it renders. The closer, the more. Now picture a fully modeled city with interiors. The system running this in Unreal Engine doesn't have to sweat it when it shows thousands of rooms and hundreds of buildings, because technically, it's only really rendering a minute amount of pieces of a mesh from such a distance. I built an example of this in Unreal Engine. Each segment of these buildings on screen have a door, three sphere objects, two benches, a table, and more filling them up. Nanite allows me to run this at 60 FPS on my screen, without issue, and I made this as unoptimized garbage. Unreal Engine gets even cooler when you look into lumens, or the destruction. Buildings blown away with real physics, revealing interiors and players hiding within. This could all be possible with Unreal Engine, and game engines like it, that advance the industry forward rather than stagnating. Data could be an issue. That's a lot of space for a skyscraper to have each room individually modeled. But this can be ignored using something similar to Fuel's system. Fuel used procedural generation to create a massive map that would have theoretically taken about 36 regular DVDs to store, according to Seamus Young's explanation on YouTube. But instead, the game world isn't actually stored on the disc, but rather algorithms that result in the map you see are stored. The point of this is to say that interiors can be optimized using procedural generation not random interiors, the same interior sets every time, but in algorithmic form. These developers create different room sets depending on the building. Using various models, color options, location sets, they randomize hundreds of different variations. Then they can set these in an order that works. 
clean it up, and compress it into something that could be spit out the same way each time a player approaches it. In the same way, you could see two of the same car on the streets in different colors, a building can have the same objects inside with different textures, but calculating these algorithms uses CPU power, which is harder to come by compared to hard drive space. So it'd probably just be easier to have these models sitting in the spots without any procedural generation. Way back in 2015, Crackdown 3 was working on next generation level ideas. In their functioning demo, they were able to destroy an entire city, which also had full interiors, and watch the buildings collapse. How this worked was, the Xbox only handled a certain amount of the destruction, after which, assigned servers would take over the computation that the Xbox could not do itself. These servers were assigned to certain plots of land in the game world. They demonstrated this with the colors. Each color represents a different server handling the workload. If pieces of debris from one server fell over into another server, the data would seamlessly transfer the workload over between the servers. The power of the cloud is immense when you consider that things like this can be done. Microsoft has proved the cloud can power unthinkable games like Microsoft Flight Simulator, a game that has the entire scale-accurate planet Earth. Players don't outright download the planet, but rather, they only stream in the segments they visit. Unfortunately, Crackdown 3 removed these features and downgraded until it became less impressive than its predecessor, Crackdown 2. Microsoft likely deemed the server costs too high and scrapped the project. Fully enterable buildings is possible. Many games already do it. Apex, Fortnite, Warzone, and H1Z1 are all shooters that utilize the buildings on their maps. Project Zomboid leans entirely on the idea that you can explore everything you see, loot it, and survive. MMOs like RuneScape and World of Warcraft have huge worlds with countless interiors. Zelda, Breath of the Wild, The Dishonored series, Arma 3, State of Decay 1 and 2, and Wildlands have massive worlds with tons of building interiors. Community-built Minecraft city maps like Greenfield or Mine City have huge cities to explore, with fully explorable buildings. Exploring areas like this are mind-blowing, with subways, courthouses, skyscrapers, construction sites, and more. Hogwarts Legacy is highly anticipated to have a fully explorable Hogwarts Castle and Hogsmeade. Test Drive Solar Crown is a racing lifestyle game that's going to feature a one-to-one -one game map of Hong Kong Island. While it may not have fully enterable buildings, it will have many. The Test Drive series is known for their interiors and activities, and it's commendable to see a studio take on a task like remaking a scale-accurate replica of a city. People want to feel immersed in video game worlds. They want to explore them. If they see it, they want to be able to get to it. Graphics have seemingly hit a standstill. I think this is the direction game developers should be heading, on more features. Features like fully enterable buildings. Grand RP is an awesome RP server for GTA 5 PC players. Not only does this server look great, but it also plays great too. With over 350 DLC cars, loads of missions, and a community that's actually fun to play with unlike any GTA Online lobby ever. There are always more than 25 active admins online as well, looking out for you. You can become a police officer and enforce the law, or just get a typical job because there's a huge variety of choices. If that doesn't interest you, become a criminal and try to steal someone's car and sell it, but you might end up in jail. Join or create a family with your friends to gain access to special missions like robbing a bank, infiltrating an aircraft carrier, and more. The server is regularly updated, constantly introducing gameplay improvements. To join, just click the link in the description, register an account, download their easy-to-use launcher, and play. Alternatively, you can use 5M. Join Grand Roleplay today through the link in the description below and get in-game bonuses.